Hey everyone, my name is Gunther and welcome back to another episode of Ottawa Zoo. In today's episode, we're going to take this unused chunk of land and turn it into a brand new habitat for the red fox. In fact, we're going to try a few different techniques to create something bigger and better than ever before. Of course, if you're liking this content, feel free to leave a like or a comment. Otherwise, let's dive right in. Now, any habitat build in Planet Zoo can be broken into four buckets. These are terraforming, which is what we're seeing happen right now, barrier work, foliage work, and backstage work. And coincidentally enough, you're gonna see all four buckets in this speed build today, which I know is weird. It's not often I show all of them. Now, when it comes to terraforming, in this case, I opted for a moat. And you don't really have to do a moat. In fact, I don't think you need a moat for a red fox. 100% I understand that. But I also wanted to try something new and I saw this amazing habitat for a jaguar in Mexico and I really wanted to kind of emulate that build which had this really cool natural looking moat. Now when it comes to something like this, you have to keep a few things in mind. One is it's gonna be the length or the size of the moat. Two is it gonna be how deep and three is what are you gonna fill it in? So there's two ways to fill in a moat. You can actually use rock or you can use water. And in my case, I have to go with some rock work because I just felt it looked a little bit more natural and it fit the entire theme of this entire build. Now, of course, it's a lot easier to say you're gonna build it than it is to actually do it. And there is one big elephant that you have to kind of confront when working with these types of moats or terraforming work, which is gonna be a lot of terraforming edges. Unfortunately, the terraforming tool doesn't match very well with our pathing system. So you're gonna get a lot of these burnt edges and the best way to fill them in, I like to think, is to use mulch. Now, later on, I'm gonna go ahead and add in some ferns, a lot of ferns actually, to try to create this man-made barrier that is also at the same time very natural looking. And I think it mixes very well with the overall build. And just like that, we've completed our animal barrier. Now I call it an animal barrier because it's not a good guest barrier, which means we have to create something for our guests. And I wanted to keep the same theme that is throughout Ottawa Zoo. So all these natural wooded colors. To that end, I just went with two different wood pieces, slapped them together like so, and then I placed them on top of a stone temple block. And the reason why I went with a stone temple block is because you want something to act as the base for your barrier, something that's gonna be solid and what is more solid than stone? And just like that, we have both our animal and guest barriers all set up. So with our first two buckets completed, it is time to finally move on to foliage, which is probably going to be the majority of the work that you do on any habitat because you do got to make it look amazing. And I realize you're seeing a lot of rock work and that's not foliage, but it is under the nature tab. So I like to add it to the foliage bucket in terms of our four step process. Now, I realize that everybody has their own method when it comes to building their habitats. Everybody's method is really awesome because it works really well for them. This is my method and it works for me. And if you learn from this and if you take my method or if you build on this method, that makes me super happy because it helps you to build something even bigger and better than before. And that's really all I want to do. Now, for me, when I work on foliage, I like to look at our habitat as our canvas. We need to have something ready to go for all of our foliage work. You can't just go in and add terraforming after the fact, which is pretty much what I'm doing right now. I'm adding terraforming, making sure that everything's ready to go, adding in some additional rock work, all that fun stuff. Now, I know I said our fourth bucket would be our backstage area, but we do have to prepare where we're going to place our backstage area, if only just to know where we're going to place all of our foliage. So really quickly, I just place a rough cut of what our back area would look like. Again, this is probably going to change. It's just to give me an idea of what I can work with from a foliage perspective. Now, I did cheat a little bit by grabbing our barrier from our cougar habitat. It's OK when we want to reuse something that you love that much. Of course, we have our foliage. And normally you would just see a stop motion view of all of our foliage changing. We start with our grass, add in our bushes, but I'm gonna change it up today. I'm really impressed with how this entire habit had turned out. And I wanna show you some of the additional work that went into from a foliage perspective. This is really important to me because foliage is something I've always struggled with. Uh, there's actually a lot I've always struggled with Planet Zoo and I'm slowly getting better, but I really wanted you to see some of the work that goes into it. And on top of that, you can see my manic style when it comes to building, because I think as many of you might know right now, I tend to get distracted really easily when it comes to building and you're seeing this happen. Now, I'm not going to bore you with all the details associated with placing down foliage. I think you've heard me talk about that a lot in the past. Instead, what I really want to talk about today is more about what's the plan for Ottawa Zoo. We are coming to a close. Ottawa Zoo is near completion or as far as I'm happy with it. 
we're also getting to the point where my computer is starting to slow down every time I load it up. And that usually is a sign that maybe we've hit that end space uh, for your zoo. So I've put it out and I've talked to a lot of people in the Discord. And if you're not part of the Discord, think about joining. It's a really cool place you can come and hang out, talk about a lot of Planet Zoo, among some other games. But it's also a great way for you to get early looks at builds, but also to share your builds and provide feedback for your things and get feedback for your things. So if you haven't joined, think about joining. It's a link in the description below. Now, of course, Ottawa Zoo is not going to be the end of this channel or the end of Planet Zoo. I'm loving what we can do here, and I really want to focus more on the animals moving forward. So to that end, I'm toying with the idea of potentially opening up a sandbox zoo. Now, when I first started Ottawa Zoo, I had the backstory that it was called Conservation Canada. From Canada, it makes the most sense. Our business is conservation. Uh, so I've created this entire backstory. Conservation Canada owns this area, among all the other. But a sandbox zoo gives me more freedom to interact with the community as well. We can come up with names for animals. We can have named employees, everything like that. And these are things that I think are one way I can interact with you and you can interact with me. And I think that would be really cool. Having your name immortalized in a YouTube video, what, who wouldn't want to do that? So more food for thought. But we still have one last episode. Uh, from a build perspective, we have one area near our Arctic point that we really need to find a home for and kind of clean up and finish. So there's a few things we can do here and I'm talking to the community and I was looking at additional animals that we could place in the zoo and I am 99% positive that we're probably going to go with a restaurant. This is one thing that doesn't exist in Ottawa Zoo. We have a food court, we have some little areas where you can get drinks and stuff like that but we don't have a restaurant. And I think that would be a really cool build to test my skills even further, building something I've never done before. So keep an eye out for that. In fact, keep an eye out for a future live stream where we build this together. I would love for you to join in and provide feedback live as we build something really amazing and maybe we take a final live tour of Ottawa Zoo. I think it would be really cool for you to see everything that is on Ottawa Zoo without necessarily having to watch a video and we can chat about it live. Now we're finally coming to a close with all of our foliage. And the only thing I couldn't really wrap my head around in fixing were these dirt paths. I like the idea of having these dirt paths. They act as a run. This is where we're gonna see our animals travel the most and we gotta fill it up. It looks too bland without it. So what I did try to do was added in some additional buffalo grass, sunk it down and went with a little bit of a drier color. This helped to denote where certain areas were and then we ended up with this finished product. And I'm super amazed with this overall habitat. Couldn't have done it without you guys because this was also built on a live stream. Now it's finally time to address our fourth bucket, which is our backstage area. And there's a few things on this one that I tried differently for the first time ever. I'm a huge fan of creating backstage areas, more so because it adds a little bit of realism to your entire build, but at the same time, it can be tedious because you have to fill in an area that's never really going to be visited very often by any of your guests. You probably won't visit it very often. So thankfully, there's a few really easy tips and tricks to make for a really nice looking backstage area. And the first one, of course, is creating your kennel area. For me, I already had a pre-made kennel and I love the way this entire view looks. These conservation tubes are perfect for creating these really cool backstage areas and I love the way it overall looked. Thank God I saved it as a blueprint. Now on top of that, because you saw a little bit of a jump skip here, I went in and placed a bunch of additional blueprints that I have, but that I also downloaded from the workshop. Normally I don't try to download items from, from the workshop. I would rather build them myself, more so because it helps me with my skills, but sometimes it's okay to cheat. And I think this area is a perfect example. Now I am gonna leave a link to all of the uh, various workshop items in the description below. So if you see something you really like, feel free to download it yourself and leave a like for that content creator. It's an awesome thing that they put together and I think everybody deserves to take a look at it. Now there's a lot that goes into a backstage area that make it a little bit more realistic. Of course, we have our HVAC system for heating, venting, air and air conditioning. Really easy. It's really just going to be one rung that's going to run from one side of the building to the other side of the building. We can also add in some additional vents and you're going to see them kind of pop up and a really cool way of getting it a little bit more lifelike adding a plastic piece right behind it so you can get that darker shadow. Because of course, the interior of your uh, HVAC system is not gonna be bright enough for you to see all that silver. But on top of that, there's these walls. And when you think about a backstage area, 
the exterior wall is gonna look really nice because this is gonna be guest facing. You want it to be natural wood, you want it to look really smooth and clean looking, but it doesn't necessarily look the same on the inside. So I turned to the live stream and we chatted quite a bit about what we could do differently with this build that would make it look a little bit more realistic. And we kind of landed on the idea of using these brick wall pieces and they're painted. So we have to keep in mind, we can't just make it really easy, which means we can't just build it on a grid. We have to use our panel pieces because it's gonna be on the inside of your wall. So you're gonna have a little bit of the clipping. So we're gonna get that nice wood finish on the exterior and this really awesome brick finish on the interior. Now, of course, nothing is ever perfect. This is the first time I've done something like this. And that's what I mean by sometimes it's really cool to make these really radical changes to your build, creating something truly amazing and never before seen from your perspective. I'm sure people have built this before and I'm totally cool with that. But this is the first time I've ever done it and I absolutely love how it turned out. Of course, there were a few small minor details that we had to go back in and fix, but after some a little bit of finagling, our backstage area was practically complete. And just like that, we've created an entirely new habitat for the Red Fox. And I gotta say, this is actually looking to be like one of my best habitats yet, and I'm really excited about that. Quite a few different techniques and different build ideas really come together to create something truly memorable. Now, no speed build is complete without some cinematic shots, so feast your eyes on our new habitat. Of course, if you made it this far, think about leaving a like or subscribing. It lets me know I'm doing a good job. Otherwise, I just wanna say thank you so much for your support. And as always, ciao for now, everybody.